<coughs> I'm Lee Kerwin from Griffith University, and I'm also the um, Gold Coast branch uh, president, so I have my two hats on, and the Language Teachers Forum is a joint venture between the MLTFQ and um, Griffith University. Very happy to welcome you to our first Language Teachers Forum of the year. Hopefully it's not our last <laughs> with all the developments with COVID-19 that e even today things seem to be um, ramping up but we hope to have a nice, um, nice range of um, forums for you um, this year. So I'll pass it over to Marcel to introduce and Hello everybody, which would be our first and maybe even our last face-to-face uh, -face meeting this year before we go online, just to uh, keep the discussion that everybody's having nowadays going. Uh, today we have a special presentation by Tanya Havenstein. I say Havenstein because she's of German background. Do we say Havenstein? Ha uh, here, I don't know. <laughs> Get lots of variations. <laughs> e I I E. For those of us who teach German, you will feel like. Hafenstein. No. Taylor is actually a teacher at my workplace, sort of. She's at the University of Queensland at the ICTE. In other words, her field of specialty is teaching English to speakers who are not having English as a native language. Which I always say is our same field. You're actually teaching somebody another language. Now, uh, Tanya has a special repertoire for us today. She is going to talk about how you can, with minimal amounts of preparation, get the best possible outcomes. I've asked Tanya specifically to present to us today because last year she did a presentation for the staff at the Institute of Modern Languages that was extremely well received, and I've seen it in action since. So I hope you also take a lot away from this particular session. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Aww. Thanks, Marcel. What a lovely intro. So yes, my name is Tanya. It's so nice to see everyone. Um, it's a good turnout, I hear. Um, so this presentation is about low prep activities. So you don't need a lot of time to prepare these at all, um, but um, activities that encourage uh, lots of learner engagement. Um, but first, some background. How did this all came about? Um, these are my colleagues at ICT at UQ and we presented, oh it's two years ago now, at iTEFL which is a big TESOL conference. Um, it was in the UK and we were just chatting inspired by all the conferences there and we started talking about School in a Box which is an initiative by uh, UNICEF and um, this, they help children, um, they help give education to children during crises um, and using only one suitcase of teaching materials. So that's what prompted us to go, hmm, what would we put in our teaching toolkit if we only had one suitcase? So um, that's the question we're going to answer today in this workshop by sharing, we're going to share, I'm, well, we're, I'm going to share some tools and activities that you can use that really promote learner engagement. Um, but if you're wondering what do I mean by learner engagement, um, we're going to do an activity which will give you a definition of what learner engagement is. And at the same time, you're going to learn an activity. So first up, time for some input which means in the classroom, a chance to read or listen to language in use. So you're going to listen to the answer to um, a question. And I have two questions. The questions are, what does learner engagement mean? And what five things do all learners need to be successful language learners? But before I share an answer, can you speak to the lovely intelligent person sitting next to you for a minute? What do you think? What is learner engagement and what are some important factors? Maybe just say hi to your partner, hello. <laughs> okay, lots of activities to share today, so I'll wrap that up. As, does anyone want to share what learner engagement might mean? Anyone brave? No. <laughs> um, well, we towards the end of our discussion, we came up with intrinsic motivation. Mm -hmm. so being in the mood to study. Yep. 
definitely helps. Yeah, yeah. Active. Oh. <laughs> uh, no. If you could repeat for the online people, those voices are a little. Oh bit yes. Okay. Yeah. Got to remember that. Active, actively involved in learning. Yep. Um, is this coming through? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, great. What about some important factors that learners need to be successful? Risk takers. So yep. Great. Risk takers. Sorry. <laughs> Some, some missing information, like information gap that they need to fill? Yep, exactly. To listen. listen, yep, great. Well, I'm going to share um, an answer. It's, it's an answer um, when um, my colleagues and I were looking at School in the Box as an answer that really resonated with us. But of course, there's not just one single answer to this, this question. So the answers um, that I'm going to share come from um, methodology ELT books. Um, so teaching principles and does anyone know this person? It's Scott Thornbury. So he's like in our world like a bit of a guru. Um, yeah, so uh, we, I'm going to draw our answers from that, from this, from these two sources. So our first activity is called cooperative listening. And I use it when I want to present a short text to the class. Maybe the text is to introduce the topic for the week. Maybe the text has some target language. Maybe the text has some vocabulary you want to work on. Um, your imagination is really just the limit, but I usually have a short text. And it's a little bit like um, a traditional dictation. Uh, and uh, here's how it works. So, first step, can you find a partner and say hello? If you can work in twos, do we work out in twos? Twos, uh, two, do you mind working with a lovely <laughs> gentleman behind you? Two, 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 would you mind working with these Love one of them, yes. <laughs> All right, so decide with your partner who is person A and who is person B. Quickly decide, you have three seconds. Okay. Person A, put up your hand. You are the writer. Do you have a pen and a notepad? Yes, you are the writer. Person B, put up your hand. You are the listener. And me, the teacher, I am the speaker. Okay? So let's just check before we begin. We're going to remember, get the answer to the questions that we just presented. So are you writing the question or the answer? The answer. The answer, good. Only one person can hold a pen. Who is it? A, okay. Phew. All right, so here we go. You're going to listen to me, and A's right, B's listen. All right. Engagement is the electricity of many minds caught in a cycle of thinking, talking, and writing. Okay. With your partner, can you construct? that text together. I'll give it to you one more time. Yes, so B's you can talk to A's and construct the text together. Yeah, the text that I just dictated. Yes, the right, A's, A's right. Are you reading it again? Okay, you want it one more time? So A's? I'm going to do one more time. A's write furiously as much as you can, and B's you listen so you can help A's reconstruct it. Engagement is the electricity of many minds caught in a cycle of thinking, talking, and writing. All right, help each other reconstruct that text Just for me. Oh. <laughs> 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 
All right. Don't worry, I won't I won't check. I'll just give you the answer. Did it look something like this? Your text? Yes, word by word. Excellent. Can you comment on this one definition of what learner engagement is with your partner? Can you comment? What do you think about this definition? What do you think it means? Can you talk with each other? You what? All right. Do you like it? I, I think this, I really like this quote when I read it. Um, any thoughts? Do you agree? Not just minds, yeah. Thank God. Why many minds? Ah, because I guess it's you just wouldn't do it. You wouldn't engage with yourself. Oh, you could, couldn't you? Well, you could be too. Yes. <laughs> okay, we'll Muscle get. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll talk to who was that? It was Brown. We'll talk about his quantifiers. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. People interacting and getting involved together and thinking together and talking together. Yeah. Also with the teacher themselves. Okay. Now you're going to do the same thing and you're going to switch roles. B's, you are the writer. A's, you listen. And I'm going to speak. It's the second question. What five things do all learners need to be successful? And this is also the framework of my talk today to help you demonstrate the activities. So um, which person has a pen in their hand? Bees. Bees, good. And when we finish, what do you do together? Reconstruct. Reconstruct the text. All right. Here we go. Learners need meaningful input, interaction, motivation, output, and feedback to be successful. OK. Quickly check in with your partner. Can we get it again, Miss? <laughs> I'll give it to you one more time. One more time. Learners need meaningful input, interaction, motivation, output, and feedback to be successful. I think you already have guessed my, my next thing. I can hear some of you already discussing. So yes, what do we mean? So we can process this definition. What do you think we mean by input, interaction, motivation, output, feedback? Can you talk with the, your partner again? What do we mean by these five factors? Okay, excellent. Um, I'm going to keep moving. 
but hopefully that sparked a few thoughts about um, what learners need to be successful um, and engaged. <clears throat> it's also the framework of how I'm going to organize the activities today. So um, can you remember the five? Give me one. <laughs> Input. Input. Motivation. Motivation. Interaction. Output. 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 Feedback. Feedback. Perfect. Oh, give yourselves a clap. Mm. Nice job. All right. So um, we've had input. Now we're going to, we've just had input. So we're going into interaction, which means a chance to use language together. <clears throat> Can you tell me what's the sport? Tennis. Did you know that tennis and vocabulary go really well together? <laughs> Do you know who that is? Absolutely. Ash Barty. <laughs> who watched the tennis? <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh, trying to stay awake. Um, so let's imagine um, you want to review vocabulary. This is a really good activity for re reviewing vocabulary. So all you need is a partner, again, Oh, by the way, sorry, I'm going to step backwards. That last activity, do you remember the name? Cooperative listening. Cooperative listening. Uh, so we used a short text and we worked together to reconstruct that text. Um, how much preparation did I need for that activity, do you think? Next to nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very quick. Low prep. So. Next, so yes, we've got tennis, we've got vocabulary, they are a great combination. So find a partner, all you need is a partner and you need one of these. Um, <laughs> I always carry recycled paper from my classes because I like to be environmentally friendly. Um, so instead of putting paper I don't need anymore in the bin, I go, mm. I just get a clip and I put this in my backpack or in my basket and I take it with me to every lesson. So I always have scrap paper. That's all you need. This is how long it takes to prepare. You ready? That's it. That's the only preparation you need. So how does it work? You choose three categories. For example, Category one is food, category two is animals, category three is clothes. Depending on your level, I'm t in this whole workshop going to choose really easy um, concepts, easy vocabulary, but you can choose it to however you want. You could have architecture or preservation if you're doing something academic. You, you choose the, the categories that you want. Um, I'm just choosing these today. So there are three sets, three tennis sets. The first set is on food, the second tennis set is on animals, the third is on clothes. So can someone be my volunteer? No one's going to be my volunteer. <laughs> Yay! Okay. What, what's, what language do you teach? Japanese. Japanese, oh, I can't speak Japanese. Because we could do it in German. Should we do it in German? Let's try it in German. So, <clears throat> if you don't speak German, that's okay. I'm going to say a food word in German, and you're going to say a different word. So, for example, banana. Guess what word that is? <laughs> banana. Chocolate. Ah, oh, but that's not, oh yeah, it's, fr it's food, sorry, yes, 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 yes. Um, apfel. Kuchen. Mm. And we keep going and going and going and going and going until someone can't think of any more vocabulary. And I go, oh, I can't think of any more words in German. You win. Okay, first game goes to this lovely lady. What's your name? Chrisa. Chrisa? Chrisa. Chrisa. And then we go to match uh, set to animals. So I might say hunt, which means dog. Mm. Yes. Pet. 
elephant. And we just continue. Okay? Easy peasy until someone has no more words. And then the last set is, is uh, close. Okay? But I think everyone gets, gets the idea. Do you want to try it with someone who speaks, who teaches your language, or just do it in English? Do you want to try? Just in English? Okay. <laughs> Find, find a space in the room. I'm going to throw a tennis ball. Have a quick go and do it with, with a partner. <laughs> right. <laughs> and one more. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, you can do it as a three. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh. Die. <laughs> I know. <laughs> no, no, no. Sorry to cut the fun short. Um, but you get the idea. I, I love warming up with this one because our classes start at 8 o'clock in the morning. And not even my brain is functioning very well at 8 o'clock in the morning. So imagine the students trying to then, you know, start their day of study. So. I often just start with tennis, just to get them warmed up. It's nothing very, you know, highly intensive in terms of thinking. It's just remembering vocabulary. But it's also a good idea to follow it up with meaningful practice. So that's a very controlled practice. Can you remember the word? But of course, you can follow it up with um, meaningful practice, so communication, using those words in questions and answering each other's questions. Okay, so <clears throat> I have some other ideas. These were my students last week. I thought, can I please take a photo? But um, we did different le lexical sets, so completely different. You can keep it the same. So um, if the, f the lexical set is food, you can make one game fruit, another game vegetables, and another game meals. Other ideas? Collocations. So I'm not sure if you have collocations in your languages, but in English we have lots of collocations with go, like go swimming, go fishing, go out, yes, do homework, do the washing, do the dishes, have, uh, have dinner, have Meetings. Have meetings, have breakfast, yes. So um, collocations, you can choose your verbs there. Pronunciation, so I've just got three different sounds there. So the first one's like E, so all the words that have E, like tree and C and B. The next one's E, like leg and egg. So you get the idea. You can choose three sounds. You can use um, verb forms. Infinitive, past simple, past participle. Okay. Right. So, I was going to ask you, uh, were you motivated after doing that, that tennis game? Yes, question. Oh, I know, I noticed that. Yeah, so that brings us to motivation, a chance to inspire learning. It's amazing. It's amazing the difference that this and this can make in a classroom. It makes a, a huge difference. And um, I, I bought these with my own money, but this is a kind of a relatively new purchase because my whiteboards before this set, I had for 10 years. So it was really worth the investment. Um, they're like $2.80 from Daiso, I think. 
and it's just for me really worth having it. But if you don't want to spend that, you can laminate paper. Or you can just go through, if you have piles of recycled paper, you can just use that. That's also um, usable. Okay, so um, let's jump right in. We're, I'm going to show you some activities you can do to motivate your students. Um, some people might just give spelling tests with shouting out words and they've got to write them all down. This is another spin. So I'm going to ask you, maybe work in groups of three. You three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Maybe you two. Oh, sorry. Maybe you two and you three. Do I have another one for you guys? You guys can have that one. All right. Do you mind passing them down? And do you mind passing some down? Sometimes I forget to bring the paper towels that I steal from my staff kitchen. <laughs> but <laughs> If I forget this, I just rip up recycled paper and I can just use that for cleaning. It's, it's, it's not a problem. So I'm just going to rip some. Can you pass it down to the different groups? Ah. Ah. Ah, great. Ah. And that you can get these little tiny square, um, like little erasers. Little eraser, a little like little whiteboard eraser. Oh, cute! Yeah. Oh, where did you get them from? Online, did you say? I'll read your email. Yes, and my. To you and you can email it to everybody else. Yes, that sounds good. You would have everyone's emails. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so um, has have you guys got a pen? Yeah. All right. Ready? The instructions are simple. I'm going to, uh, you're going to work with a per partner, you're going to write the word I say, and then when you finish, hold up your whiteboard. Okay? The word is bears. Please spell bear together. Oh, sorry, no. Can you spell, oh, I meant to, I meant to say chair, sorry. It's, it's late afternoon. Can you spell chair? Yeah. <laughs> chair, great, great. Fantastic, 100%. Excellent. Now I've given it away, but can you spell this? <laughs> Excellent. All right, so now can you write two more words with the same sound? So this is air, like chair, bear. Can you write two more words on your whiteboard with the same sound? Stare, rare, good. Tear, where and where. Just mm. two. Just two words. Stare, yeah, tear. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so that was spelling. <laughs> Three, two. So it has to be, it can't be an A-I-R or an E-A-R word. It has to be something like stare, S-T-A-R-E. No, any spelling, any word, just the same sound. Yeah, so this sound here is air, 
like chebe. It doesn't matter what spelling, just the the same sound, the same sound. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I I go between liking competition and not liking competition. At the moment, my class like competitions, but I always feel a little bit guilty because at the moment I'm like anti-competition because it kind of separates people. But um, kids love it. I was just going to say, so you can turn that into a competition. The reason I ask you to hold it up is usually the first team to hold it up is two points and the other team, so they don't give up, um, get a point correct if they also have the um, right answer. So if they're in teams too, it's, there's that a little bit of sharing. You know, it's not individuals yes. against each other it, as much. Yeah, so and on a bit more of a chance. yeah, exactly, and it includes that interaction and motivation. So that's one idea. Um, you can also do this. The typical gap fill. So instead of asking your students to fill in the activity in their notebook, like filling in the gap, they can just write their answers on their whiteboard. Okay. For example, I, will, I have an example here, but you're going to do it. Can you write the missing words on your whiteboard with your partner? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. It's a really good one for controlled practice. You can just show a sentence at the t at a time, and they go. If you're working on verbs, you know, it's it's very motivating. I know. Um, I've been a language learner. I've been in a situation where. The teacher just gave us gap fills and then checked the answers and then gave us another gap fill and I was so demotivated to learn. So just changing it up a little bit um, can just really help with motivation, um, especially if you're doing things like grammar. Um, so other ideas? You can use it for quizzes. Maybe you have a quiz and they just write ABC a list um, on their whiteboards. I use it for writing error corrections. So if I'm giving them feedback on their writing that they've produced, I might write an incorrect sentence and they write the correct one on their whiteboards. Can we put chalk? Can we pretend they have to write a Exactly. Really, you can, there are a million activities you can do with whiteboards. The, the only limit is your imagination. I'm still, I'm finding I'll, I'll be thinking, oh, what am I going to do with this, with this grammar or with this? And I go, oh, I have, a, I have an idea. And it'll just be something I've never thought of. I'm still thinking of whiteboard ideas. So it's just really your imagination go crazy. These are just some ways I've used it. Um, you could do it as Pictionary. You know, they, they draw the picture and the... the word and they write the picture to match the word? Oh, oh however you want. Um, you can, what I do sometimes is if you have three, say, or whatever, you have groups and I say, okay, one person from each group come to the front and I show them the word, might be a banana, whatever. They run back to their groups and they draw on the whiteboards and the group has to guess what the picture is. Or I, if I'm introducing language, I might give them a card secretly and say, this is your word. Don't show anyone. Draw a picture of it. They can check this word um, on the dictionary so they know what to draw. And then we have a gallery and we walk around and they add the words that they think the picture is of. And we go through all the vocabulary <coughs> like that. Um, my, my IML Japanese teacher, probably after attending 
your seminar to the teachers, yes. did the word tennis on the whiteboards. So it wasn't throwing. It was ah, fantastic. Mm. <gasps> oh, <laughs> yes. So word tennis, people at home um, using whiteboards. Oh, I love it. Banana. Apple. Yeah. Yeah, yes. Great. You could put on each whiteboard a different category and then write a word and then next person. And then pass it on. Mm. Yeah. Nice, nice. I love it. All right. So, um, yeah, and we can use it for, last, lastly here, pronunciation, like we did with um, bear and chair. Um, actually, I know a story about a bear and a chair. Mm -hmm. Do you know a story about a bear and a chair? Mm -hmm. I'll give you a clue. You ready? Check. Goldilocks. All right. <clears throat> so this one is called, what am I up to? All right. So this was a picture roll. You just checked the story about the ch with the chair and a bear. Another way you can use picture roll, it doesn't have to be a giant book. You can flash a picture on a PowerPoint and then mute it. You can have a textbook. You can print a photo whatever the picture is, okay? Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, okay. So another way to use picture roll is I want you to try and see the picture and then tell your partner two things you see, okay? So what do you look at? The picture. How many things do you tell your partner? Two, two things you see. You ready? Tell me two. Tell me two. Tell me two things. Pink. Bears. Bears. Table. Windows. Potato. Table. Oh, table, yes. Porridge. Porridge, good. Curtains. Curtains, excellent. You get the idea. Um, how are we going for time? <gasps> I've got to keep running. Okay. <laughs> you could get your students to, um, if you're doing stories and you're doing a picture roll with the book, you can get them to try and tell each other this story about the three bears or whatever the story is. So we can use our pictures. That brings us to output. Our, um, that one was called picture roll, which brings us to almost our last one. Output, a chance to produce language. So that's your speaking or your writing. Um, we can use pictures for output such as picture roll, and it's good for um, introducing the topic of the week, for example, um, or uh, topics from your course book. Um, I was going to say, I keep going blank. Um, oh, yeah. How long does that take to prepare, do you think, to have one picture? Two minutes. Yeah, if you Google, I'm, I'm actually very picky when I'm choosing pictures for a PowerPoint. I will search and search and search. You know that scrunched up picture? Mm. I'll be like, mm, do I like that scrunched up look? So sometimes it takes me a little bit long, but it doesn't need to take very long. Yeah, you, you need a picture <laughs> of a Ferris wheel. Google it, there it is, print it out. Or maybe you have a book. Grab it off your bookshelf. You're done. You're ready to go. Okay. Another way to use pictures is with an activity called I Wonder. And this um, activity helps students to answer their own questions. So they're producing their own questions and um, answering their own questions using the image. So I Wonder, um, I'm going to do it, give you an example with the Goldilocks. 
And I'm going to just make statements using I wonder. I wonder if the bears know there's a girl watching them. I wonder if the porridge is tasty. I wonder where this cottage is. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. Okay. When you do this with um, a partner, it's like ping pong or tennis. I say, I wonder if the porridge is tasty. And my partner might say, mm, I wonder where the cottage is. And then I return with another statement. I wonder if the bears are happy. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. Do I need to answer the statement? No, you're not answering the statement. Do you take turns? Yes, okay, good. So can you try with your partner, I wonder statements, I wonder, I wonder with this picture. <laughs> okay, did you produce a lot of I wonder statements? Yes, a lot of output. Um, more ideas for output. So producing language, same image using this picture. What's the story? What do you think is the story behind this picture? With a lovely person sitting next to you, tell the story. Okay. Did you produce a lot of language? Good imaginations? Yes? Interesting stories? Oh, wait, I'd love to hear some feedback on the stories, but I'm mindful of the time. So, again, using the same pictures, you can, um, it's a good way to sometimes bring in vocabulary that you want them to focus on. So, this is called this activity is called add words. So you're going to do the same thing again. Tell the story, but this time as you're telling the story, use these words in your story. Oh, <laughs> you're a cheat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell the story. Don't don't look ahead. Okay. I'm I'm really uh, milking this image to show you many activities. Of course, you probably wouldn't do all these activities with the same image. You might split it up and go, one time I'm going to use pictures for this. I'm going to do a picture roll. Another time I'm going to do um, I wonder statements for another picture. And then another time I'm going to do add words. And then this is another thing you can do. Are you ready? I'm going to tell you the story. And you will notice these words. You ready? Just listening. Cannonball! Bruiser, the grizzly bear, seriously knows how to have fun. It turns out that the 400 pound grizzly bears love jumping into swimming pools. That is, if young Bruiser's behavior can be counted as evidence. Bruiser can be seen repeatedly climbing the stepladder and then jumping into the outdoor pool before playing with a floating surfboard. This friendly four-year-old bear is an animal ambassador 
for the charity Single Vision, which cares for exotic animals while educating the public about conservation is issues. In addition to his love of, swim of swimming, Bruiser also apparently has a taste for tearing up cardboard boxes, as we all do. All right, so there was also a bit of listening practice there. Do you want to retell the story, or are you a bit tired? <laughs> What you can then do is get the students to retell the story as they remember it from the, the dictation. All right, where are we up to? I think we're on to our final stop. Um, give me a second. All right, so we're almost at the end. Can you remember the five? Things, input. feedback, input, input. input. output, input. Feedback. 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 feedback, motivation, feedback. Interaction. interaction is the one I couldn't hear. Yes, good, excellent. So this brings us, we've done everything. We've had input, interaction, motivation, output, um, and now we're going to look at feedback, which is a chance to reflect and hear from you. So speaking of activities that we've been doing, can we pause? and get some feedback from you using your fingers. How many activities did we do today? Ten. All right, here's my list. Cooperative listening for input, word tennis for interaction, mini whiteboards, motivation, um, picture roll, I wonder for output, oh, and add words for output. Retell the story. What's the story? Retelling the story. Oh, and retelling the story, number seven. <laughs> there were probably other ones I added in there. But we did a couple tell of things on the mini whiteboards had a few different activities. Sorry? You tell the story and then retell the story. Yes. Yes. Yet, yeah, what's the story? That's right. Thank you for that. <laughs> what's the story? Add words, retell the story. Three in one. Excellent. All right. Um, how many, so this is another way I use this all the time. I make, I make up the, the um, what's the word, the barometer in the moment. Um, you use, is this is called barometer. One way to use it is to make three um, levels. So the question is to you, how many of these activities do you think you will use in your classrooms? So the barometer is none, not going to use any, some, a lot. Can you show me with your hands? Not going to use any. Don't be shy. Don't mind if you say none. <laughs> Some, a lot. Doesn't have to be. Oh, that's a good, good indication. I, I like using that with my students. If it's something like, um, uh, you know, I know, if they're doing a listening, was that really difficult? So so easy. Yeah. Or. Um, Yes, yeah, exactly. Um, uh, I don't know, I'm a bit blank, but how happy did you feel after that activity? Not happy, so, so, really happy. Um, actually, oh, I, I got a, I've got a photo actually recently. I did an activity that I had never done before and I wanted their feedback. So I asked them, um, did you enjoy that activity? Didn't enjoy it, so so. Um, really enjoyed it, and they all went like that. I'd love to show you the photo, but um, and not everyone was smiling. So it can be anything, whatever you choose those three to be, um, and it's a really good way to get fast feedback. So your my final feedback that I would um, like to ask you from you is called an exit ticket. You can use this, um, again, your imagination is your limit. Um, you could say one activity I will use in my classroom is, 
or one thing I learned today was, or um, something that I f find difficult is, one question I have for my teacher is. So whatever the STEM is, you choose the STEM and to get your feedback that you need. All right, so my feedback that I would like from you today is one activity I will use is, and just write the name of the activity. Could you do that quickly? And um, just put it, uh, when you leave today, just put it on the, on the front, on the front desk. I, I, I would use a short text, so it depends on what your aim is. Um, sh should we see, maybe everyone would like to hear the answer, yeah. Cool. You don't have to bring it down now, but as you leave, you can just leave it there. Uh, if you can't remember the activities, it's here. Oh, it's coming in here oh well. yeah, cool. And everyone was doing the I wonder. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. Everybody wants to learn to surf. Cool. All right. Um, so, I'm not sure about the timing, but I'd, I'd like to answer this lady's question. Alexandra. So Alexandra asked, um, how would I use cooperative listening? It really depends on your aim. Um, if it's, for example, to introduce a topic, maybe it will be just um, a short text about that topic that would spark some questions or discussions. Um, Yeah, so it's good for oh, it's good for so many things. They have to listen. The listener is listening. The writer's writing. You're you're working together to reconstruct, which works on your grammar. So if they can't remember word for word, they can use their knowledge of grammar to reconstruct it. So um, it's often a really good way to test their grammar skills, um, because um, even though they might not hear the word they could construct it. And maybe it, it's not important, depending on the aim again, if it's grammar, it's not important they get it word for word, but that they get the feeling or the meaning of the text, but maybe they rearrange the order of the <coughs> words or used a different word instead of what I had actually said. So it depends on what you're um, testing. Uh, we used a book, maybe I shouldn't say it, but the typical um, exercise for introducing vocabulary is here's the word match it with a meaning and it drives me crazy and every unit starts like that and I think how are the students going to match these words with no context like it's it's just you're basically saying here guess yeah it's it's just a lucky guess and I don't think it's useful, in my opinion, to just practice guessing. If you're introducing vocabulary, I would go, okay, these are the words they have to know. I'll construct a text myself, maybe. Um, and then, or maybe the text is already in a listening. And I just grab it from the listening or a reading text. So I grab it from a paragraph. Um, and then they have a better chance of actually you go, okay, circle these words. Maybe they don't know the meaning of it, but they can write it in the text, and then you can say, okay, what do you think these words mean? Um, and in introduce it that way. At least that now they've had listening practice, writing practice, working together, grammar practice, and working out meaning of vocabulary. So it really depends on the aim of what you want to achieve. I just have a question on 
online for yep. somebody who joined a little bit late and was wondering whether the PowerPoint might be made available to everyone afterwards. Yeah, I um, think so. Is that something that happens? Or you might have to take the photographs of the, your students out. Oh, I got permission. Oh, you did? Oh, like did ten times. Are you sure? You sure? Yeah, no problem. Oh, I, 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 I gave them a thing to sign as well. Yeah. <laughs> but they're going. What do I have to sign up for? And it's like, mind you, the, the person who came as she said she was a little bit late, so it doesn't really have the explanation of those activities, does it? Oh, but wait, there's more. Oh. Okay. Um. So. <laughs> Uh, all the activities are here with an explanation. Oh, thank you. Excellent. There we go. So probably that's all you need. All right. So um, that person online, if you would like to have a look at that. So, so just to explain this this um, Padlet, have you used Padlet before? Yeah. Um, it's called Cam T Soul. I tried to work out how to rename it. I couldn't. I just, I'm not very technologically great sometimes. But uh, I presented in Cambodia. Um, I'm very pretty much this presentation with my friend um, Fiona and it's a product of working with my colleagues um, and we called it School in a Box. So that's the reason it's got that name because it, um, last year we went to Cambodia to present this. So you can see under each column input it's got the activity with instruction and then it's got interaction and the activities with instructions. And it's got motivation, output, and any extra links. If you're interested, you can click on the links um, as well. So that's probably all she might need. Is that, is that good? Um, uh, yeah, it's you, you, If you have <coughs> Cam TESOL toolkit, or you can just QR code it. Or you can maybe send the link out to. I was going to suggest if I have everybody's email on the attendance list, uh, if not, please add it to it. Uh, I'm going to get a link about those mini whiteboards, which I will forward to you all. And I will <coughs> take the opportunity to include that particular link there as well. Yeah. So, yeah. Yes, we'll all look out. And that will also appear in the um, video, I think. Mm. That will go up on the um, uh, Language Teachers Forum. Uh, page which is part of Griffith University. So if you go to griffithuniversity.edu.au uh, or griffith.edu.au and search for Language Teachers Forum, you'll be able to find all the videos from all of the um, previous um, forums and that will have been incorporated um, there as well. Yeah. If and if you're happy, it's actually what we maybe should do is actually include the link to that particular page as well in the email so that everybody can access mm -hmm. the full mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I did um, say in the abstract to bring your ideas. I don't know if we have time for people. Uh, I don't know if you prefer to discuss some of the ideas you have with each other. Um, you could base it on <coughs> these five factors or just any other ideas you want to share with each other or if you want to have question and answers or... Yes? I was going to say I use little melamine plates that I got at the cheap shop. What's uh, that melamine? Little oh, that's and they're that's really that's durable that's and um, like don't get sort of a bit messy like this. They, uh, they're really... Oh, that's interesting. And they're very good for like little sauces for kanji, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, right, yeah. yeah. Um, so they've yeah, lasted yeah. forever. Like that sort of hard plastic. Two dollars like from the reject shop when I bought them, but that's a lot of years ago. Oh, okay. okay. Just throw away like plastic and reuse. You know, oh, that yeah. melamine stuff that you can't break, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah and those, yeah, yeah just little white plates. Oh, and oh another yeah. Last time yeah. I went there, they had white trays, so I got some of them. Mm, interesting. Mm, they're mm, great. Yeah. And it wipes off well. So. Yeah, yeah, better than this. Mm. Um, yes, today's workshop video yeah. is recorded for people online, and it will go up on the Griffith University website. And you can search for it on YouTube. Yeah. Griffith University Language Teachers Forum. Um, yeah, yeah. Do you want to share your ideas with each other or do we need Somebody to wrap up? Somebody earlier was talking about with that um, whiteboard tennis um, and having, I, it just reminded me of a, another activity. I haven't tried it myself in class, but I think it would work and this is possibly what you're talking about, but you could even do it in groups of four when you're saying different topics. You could have animals, food, you know, I don't know, feelings, whatever, four different topics and you're sitting in a group of four and you write your word on that. It's got the topic at the 
head of the whiteboard animal, so you write your animal, you pass it on to the next person, and then you know, in a clockwise direction, and then the next whiteboard comes mm. and it's asking for fruit or whatever, and you write that one. Mm. Um, yeah. yeah. I think that's kind of what you were talking about. But you could do it in a smaller, you know, slightly larger group, not just with two, you could do it with four people and constantly rotating yeah, yeah, and yeah. four different topics yeah. of vocab happening all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I think for my beginner students, I'd just be happy to have words not limited to a topic. Yeah. <laughs> because uh, with my primary school, very beginner students, just some tennis, with any words yeah. that they could come up Yeah, you can grade all of these activities. <coughs> and I was just going to refresh, where is it? The, do you think any of these took a long time to prepare? No. no. I hope you found them really engaging. Um, I could ask you, were the activities engaging? No, somewhat really engaging. <laughs> Oh, I'd have my head chopped off. <laughs> We're not even allowed to put blue tack on our walls, but um, we do put blue tack. <laughs> It's white Well, thank you so thank much you. for thank coming. Thanks so much. Oh, thank you. That was great. We've got so many ideas to take away and adapt it for our various languages. And thanks to those people online. We've got about 17 or 18 people in the room and almost that many again um, online. And um, we won't know how many people will see the video as well. So um, it, we will go far and wide around, um, around Queensland, hopefully. We've got a few gaps in our program for this year. I don't know if anyone in the room has an idea that they'd like to present or can think of somebody that they've um, seen at another um, forum somewhere that might like to come along. Has anybody, anybody got any ideas on the top of their head? Okay, that'll be, that'll be great. Yeah, because yes, I said, we've got some gaps. If, um, we're allowed to meet again like this in <laughs> proximity <laughs> other humans. Um, it'll be good if we've got some, um, yeah, some so ideas. I'd like to just totally throw in one suggestion here. Uh, in this uh, very much at the moment, there's a lot of discussion about delivering language classes online or mm -hmm. away from the workplace for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, I would actually be very intrigued to see if there's somebody with experience who can actually talk to us at a forum like this about how to effectively deliver language classes online or yeah well online is the word isn't it away from uh, away from the school in this virtual context and i don't mean as if sort of uh, duolingo like like here's a grammar exercise of the screen completed but actually keeping the conversation going having active interaction student student and student teacher online if you know about that i'd love to hear from you so we're just talking today because um we're having sort of crisis meetings at Griffith, like not so much if, but when um, we have to close the university down, how we will do it. And Yu Ping, who does our, Griffith does the Chinese online Australia, and uh, she's offered to show the language people how she does online um, languages, so she might, I mean, she could do something. That would be interesting. That would be interesting. Yeah, but it would have to be something soon. Yeah, school of distance ed. Yeah, it would be. Yeah, well, that, that would be another um, another yeah. 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 well, there is. I actually talked on a contract um, for a year or two. The school of distance education at Cooper Root. Mm. So I could ask someone, like one of the teachers.
is there if they feel but see Education Queensland has the technical setup to be able to do that your blackboard collaborating whatever it's called whereas not all schools have that so there's, there's, the, there's the issue of the hardware, the mm. software, and then exactly. the methodology mm. behind yeah. it. Yeah. Well, probably be they could probably deliver it, they could probably talk methodology wise, but I'm not sure that they know, you know so much about the, the, the technological setup because that's all done behind the scenes. No, that would that, essentially be an employer responsibility yeah, to actually exactly. make sure that we are equipped yeah. to deliver mm -hmm. We need the language expertise mm -hmm. and the methodology. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. I think the group can set something up on Blackboard, but I yeah. don't know how far it is. Lear on the learning place, you'd be able to access, access Blackboard. Stuff, mm -hmm. yeah. But I don't know how much the activity there is. But no, I'm just saying, if you wanted to do the course, you you, you would use Blackboard on mm. the yeah, place. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you wouldn't need anything different. It's already there to do your own courses. Mm. But they put a lot of resources in the meantime on OneNote. Collaborate Ultra is apparently available now too that we will say. Collaborate Ultra. Well, I suggest that we just hold a session going. Uh, we obviously have to be I'd like to just thank Tanya at this particular point for being uh, low prepared and highly engaging. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Marcel, everybody. Thank you, Marcel. Thanks, Lee. Thank you very much.